Okay, so now we're going to talk about Chapter 8, Project Quality Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's only three process in, uh, processes in this chapter. One's in planning, one in executing, one in monitoring and controlling. So in plan quality management, we're identifying quality requirements and documenting how to comply with them. And in managed quality, which is in executing, we're converting the quality management plan into actionable quality activities. And then in control quality, we're monitoring the outcomes of quality activities to evaluate our performance, to see how we did. Okay, so in this chapter, we're going to walk through a variety of tools, and I'll talk about where they would fit into each of these processes. But first, let me talk about plan quality management and the key outputs of that process. The first is going to be the quality management plan, which describes how an organization's quality policies will be implemented, the quality management plan. And then quality metrics, a description of a project or a product attribute and how to measure it. So we've got a plan and metrics we're going to use to determine whether or not we're meeting quality expectations. So quality metrics, and this is just a note here, if we don't measure quality, how do we know if we are meeting expectations. We've got to measure it some way. Now an example of um, a quality metric in construction is the thickness of concrete. That could be something that we monitor to determine if we have the right quality levels. Now with software it could be the number of bugs or faults in a program. That could be another quality metric. Okay now let's talk about cost of quality. This is a tool in plan quality management. Uh, the cost of quality are efforts to ensure good quality and to address instances of poor quality. It's the cost of good quality and addressing poor quality. And there's four types that they want you to know. There's costs of conformance and costs of non-conformance. So costs of conformance are prevention and appraisal. So preventing a quality issue, building a great product so there's no quality issues up front. And then appraisal is assessing the quality of our product. Prevention and appraisal. And then there's internal failures. If we produce something and we find a defect, the project team does, that's an internal failure, assuming it doesn't make it to the customer. Because we'd like to, if we can, fix an issue before it makes it, it, makes it to the customer. And an external customer is the worst case scenario when we've um, send something to our customers and it's found by them. We don't see the defect, it gets sent to them with the issue and there's lots of costs associated with addressing that. So prevention, appraisal, internal failures, and external failures. Preventions are before building a quality product ahead of time and designing it to prevent defects or quality issues. And appraisal is assessing the, the uh, quality of a product or inspecting it and that's usually oftentimes during production. And then after, we have internal failures and external failures. Internal failures are found by the project team. External failures are after we've shipped it to the customer, they've found it, and we've had to address the issues, handle returns, warranties, and so on. So these are different types of costs in each of those um, quality categories. So in prevention, it could be things like training and process documentation to make sure that we always build a quality product. And then appraisal could be inspecting and testing the product during production. Internal failure could be things like rework and repairs. So remember, this is after we've the team has completed something or completed a product. If we identify an issue before we ship it to the customers, if we have to just rework and repair it, that's an internal failure. We don't want issues or defects to make it to the customer. We want to fix it before it gets to them. And there's external failures. That's when it makes it to the customer without us knowing. They find the quality issue. So costs in this section could be for recalls, warranty claims, complaint investigations, and penalties. Now, another tool we could be using are flow charts. These are tools that we could use in the plan quality management or the managed quality process. So really what it's telling us is it depicts the sequence of process steps as well as inputs and outputs. So if we want to improve a process or fix an issue, we really have to understand it first, and um, flow charts help us to do that. I think it's just an interesting note here. In my first interview, I was actually asked to draw a process map. It's an important skill that's used a lot. And here are just some of the symbols that we would use on a process map. Um, 
these are, don't necessarily have to, to know or memorize these, but just to show you when you look at a process map what they represent. So this is a tool we could be using, a flowchart um, in the plan quality management and the manage quality processes. They can help us identify potential quality issues if we look at the process flow. Okay, another tool we could be using in this chapter, in this knowledge area, I guess, is cause our cause and effect diagrams. We might use this in manage quality or in control quality. So it helps us to organize and display origins of a quality problem. And so it, it's sometimes called a fishbone or an Ishikawa diagram. It kind of looks like a fishbone. But what you're going to have on the left-hand side are causes, and the right-hand side is an effect. So I just I already mentioned that. But so what you're going to see here are, and we want to identify all of the potential issues or causes a particular problem so we can address them. And an example might be if we have a faulty, faulty battery like they did on the Samsung Galaxy Note 7s. It doesn't keep a charge or it catches fire or something. We could, on the left-hand side of this diagram, start categorizing different causes of that problem, a faulty battery, so we know what we need to address. We could also be using histograms in this chapter, a tool and quality of our quality processes, as particularly manage quality and control quality. Really what we're doing here is just, it's a bar chart to show a central tendency, dispersion, and shape of a statistical distribution. So we can kind of break down a quality problem oftentimes with the use of histograms. And then control charts. Uh, this is an important tool in control quality to make sure that uh, we're maintaining um, a certain quality measurement or an ideal quality measurement. And they look like this. It really displays process data over time and against control limits. And so you're going to have the UCL and the LCL at the top and bottom represent upper, or I mean upper control limits and lower control limits. And so it's almost like those control limits on a control chart are like warning tracks in a baseball field. So what we want is if a, a baseball player is going to catch a fly ball, a baseball, we don't want them to run into the wall. So if they start running and they see the warning track, they know that, okay, I'm getting close to the wall and I need to stop or I need to uh, change course. So control charts, or control limits, excuse me, on a control chart indicate an out-of-control process. So if we're above or below those control limits, we know that we have a, an issue, a quality issue. And those control limits are at plus or minus three standard deviations. Finally, let's look at one more tool we could use in this uh, uh, quality knowledge area. Con uh, it's, they're called check sheets. We would use these in control quality. So it's used for counting when gathering data about a potential quality problem. There's nothing um, scientific about this. You're just trying to gather data about quality issues that you see on your project. So anyway, these are just examples of different tools you could be using in this knowledge area, and you want to be familiar with the purpose of each of them.